welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. You're so, so welcome here today. It is the 16th of January, Tuesday, the 16th of January, 2024. I had to think about that as everybody probably does. And um, I'm coming to you as always from the southwest of England, um, Devon to be precise. Um, and I just thought I would jump on today. I had sort of consider doing it tomorrow but we are having a beautiful winter's day bright sunshine chilly um no lights on no reflection off well still reflection off my gray hair but i thought i'm going to take the opportunity to podcast for once without artificial light so here i am uh if you've watched before you know it's just a good old chit chat go and grab a drink maybe your craft and we'll just talk about all things knitting, um, yarn, dear knows what else we'll talk about. You can find me on Ruth Loves to Knit podcast, um, on Instagram, it started already, on Ruth Loves to Knit, on Ravelry, and we have an email for this podcast, which lots of you have used since last time. Thank you very much. Um, and that is Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com. And you can get in touch with me in any of those um, places and I will endeavour to get back to you. Uh, as I say, you're very welcome. If you've never joined me before, come on in. <laughs> um, but if you've been with me for some time, as I say, you know what to expect. Um, our mal make along is finished. Our dust them off make alongs finished. I have sent all the prizes apart from one person hasn't claimed their prize. And that was the one for the So Yarnalicious. Uh, bag so if you entered that mile and haven't watched the mile podcast um, go and check and see if your name's mentioned um it's very short you don't have to let it sit through an hour and a half or anything and you might see your name but all of the uk ones have received the parcels i think everybody's happy um but as i said the ones that have gone to america and elsewhere i sent them as cheaply as possible so hopefully it'll be happy easter um and that you'll still you'll get your prize and that you'll enjoy it um we've started we it's me. <laughs> Why do I always say we? I've started another super, super informal um, mal or knit, knit along it is this year um, for any twin set and pearl pattern, which be, can be found on Ravelry. Um, I put all the details down below. And the hashtag for that on Instagram is T and P year 24. And you can send me pictures on email if you want, but it's more about the chat. It's more about just getting involved many many of you bought um the twin set and pearl patterns to support lamb where i used to work as a midwife in bangladesh uh, you bought those in december so i know many many of you have them and i can't remember if i said in the last podcast but the girls raised 1500 pounds i don't know if we knew the final title or final amount i can't remember anyway 1500 pounds and um uh, jo is able to add another £500 to that from her uh, her work. So £2,000 headed to Lamb is just unbelievable. Anyway, so um, if you've got a twin set and pearl, all that to say, if you've got a twin set and pearl or two patterns in your library, um, I apologise if you can hear our dogs. They are barking at anything that has the nerve to pass past, back to pass the window today. Um, I have the door open of my craft room to let even more light in. So what can you do? This is home. This is what it's like. This is real life. There you go. Um, and anyway, so back to that. So if you want to pop that in on the T&P at year 24 and just knit along with me, I'll be knitting some twin set and pearl patterns every month. I will be knitting other things too. Don't worry. Although if you see what I've cast on, you might wonder, did I think I was going to do them all in one month? But anyway, and um, sure, come and have a chat and um, join in with Rachel and Joe and me. As we enjoy that and la watching their last podcast, they have promised us some pattern prizes. I just haven't worked out the logistics of it, but um, I think um, every so often I will randomly pick a prize winner worldwide and send you some wee goodies. It might be um, a pattern, it might be a tangible prize, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Right, the other thing I want to say is, and I hope you realise I don't mention it hardly ever, is I am almost at 6,000 subscribers on here. I mean, what? I have bobbed around the 5,900 and 
whatever, 80, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and last night, I, my son excitedly told me that I was at 5,995. <laughs> so if you're a regular watcher and you want to press the wee button that says subscribe, press it. And the other good thing about doing that is if you press the wee bell, it'll let you know when I pop up because obviously I'm a bit, you know, I try and do it every two weeks, but sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer and you don't have to be waiting to see it on Instagram or whatever, it'll let you know. So that's, I've said that now. And obviously if I hit the big 6,000, can you even believe that anybody wants to listen to my nonsense um, when there's so many amazing podcasters out there? But of course there'll be another some we give away something or other um to celebrate so thank you thank you thank you for watching thank you thank you thank you for all your messages all your encouragement all your love uh, i love this wee community i think i said it um maybe at the at the end of the year i just love this wee community that we've built um you've built <laughs> i just sit here in my wee craft room slash spare room and chat away about things that i'll be doing anyway and um i hope that um you'll stay with me and as i said in a previous podcast while i keep enjoying it i will keep going with it so there you go anyway I think that's all. Um, I have some notes, but not my usual extensive notes. So this could go anywhere. Um, oh yes, my. I said before I don't do New Year's resolutions because I, I keep them for about three days and it puts too much pressure on me. But the only one I no, it's not a rather resolution. It's my aim. What I'm going to strive for. I have a massive stash, and you'll see from today I get given an awful lot. Thank you, thank you. Nobody has to give me anything. But I am so blessed that I have wonderful people in my life who either gift me yarn, give me yarn or whatever. And uh, I have plenty of yarn. But I love yarn. <laughs> it makes me happy. But the decision I have made for this year is I will only buy yarn that I can touch, feel physically. I have made so many mistakes on buying yarn that I think is a certain colour. And it comes and it's not. It's too pink or it's too blue or it's too... And I, I wouldn't say I've made mistakes. I'm always going to use it, but it's just not what I was looking for. So um, we're going up to Edinburgh again. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I work, for myself and my husband, Nigel, work for a Christian mission. We have two kids. I usually mention that as well, but they're teenagers now and don't always want mentioned. They're um, Eva and Samuel. Samuel's 14 and Eva's uh, 15. And um, we live, that's why we're, we live in Devon, even though I have a Northern Irish accent. Um could I have any more tangents today? And um, we have to go up to Edinburgh. That's where our, our headquarters is for our mission. And we have to go up there just after Easter. And of course, there's Ginger Twist, there's Kathy Knits, and there's one other one that I didn't get to last time. But we are, and it's my birthday. <laughs> so, but we are going, the meetings are from the Wednesday till the Saturday. And they aren't open on Mondays and Tuesdays, so I have to work out some some way <laughs> to be able to get there and have a squish at yarn and maybe buy myself a, a birthday present. But that'll be the first thing that that I in my head. I don't have any shows coming up or anything like that. So that's so that's my. It's not a resolution. It's what I'm going to try try to aim for. Um, is to only buy yarn that I can touch um and know what's the right color and know it's what I want. Um, see how that goes. No judgment here. Okay, let's, I have one FO. Um, last time I left you on the cliffhanger um, of having nothing on my needles, um, which was, as you can imagine, super, super unusual. I didn't even have my handbag socks. I finished those the night before a podcast. Um, but um, that was the 31st of December, wasn't it? I haven't, I've only, done, yes. So that's what, 16 days. Um, and it took me quite a wee while. As I said, I was having to rearrange my wee craft room. I bought new storage for more of these sort of metal things and boxes um, to really sort out because I couldn't really see what I had. Um, and it took me ages to work out what I wanted to cast on. Um, but I had some yarn already kicked up and I think I'd used it in a project, ripped the project back. I think it's about, this is about the third incarnation of it. But anyway, and this yarn, I'll show you the, the um, pattern first. It's the Woolly Waffle Shawl by Stephen West. Nice, I would say beginner knit. 
don't see why not. He his his partners are so well explained. There is a fade in it, but he tells you when to fade. So, um, although I didn't follow it, so that's what he's done. Obviously, you think I would do the yellow, but um, I didn't. <laughs> and I used yarn that I was given for. I used to I used to do a lot of sample knitting, uh, for for yarn dyers, and I sample knitted for um. Is that right? Sample knitted, sample knit. I don't know. For um, fruitful fusions, lovely Ishrat. This fruit, fruitful fusions, and if you sample knit, they usually give you back the amount of yarn that you knit up. So it's a win-win situation, really. And I had some beautiful yarn that she had sent me, and as I say, it's been caked up for. Oh be nine six to nine months and it almost got to the point i was going to reskin it again but i'm so glad i didn't i'm so glad i had it on hand oh i think that's sewing up lovely what that do for my <laughs> always forget for the thumbnail can you see the yeah you can my lovely double chin as well so the woolly waffle shawl is garter stitch with a slipped you can see the nice uh, knit stitch you see the detail there the squish is unbelievable I didn't block it um, heavily because I wanted it to um, stay like that and I basically just used all the yarn I had <laughs> hence the navy at the bottom because I didn't I didn't want to start into um, another ball just for that and I think actually I have oh I never told you what I was wearing I'll tell you in a wee minute Look at that. It is blown out a wee bit, but not much. Love it. Love it. I think that oh, I have a cushion on my chair and it's just annoying. So it's away on my rocking chair. I absolutely love it. You can see there are wee navy flecks in it. And um, I don't know if she meant it to be a fade, but I actually used it. I can't remember. Was it the V-back tea? I think it was the V-back tea that... Um, she had asked me to knit and she, that's a fade and I just asked her for the yarn again. I, she let me keep, I had a wee ball about maybe 30 grams and she let me keep that from the from the sweater and um, it, she shows them at, at yarn shows. And I say it's Fruitful Fusions and I have put, so the top, the top colour is called Iced Tea. I've written the A on it. These are all uh, Superwash Merino and Island DK, so 225 metres. So I just knit it until there was basically nothing left of that one. Then um, the next one is uh, Cornish, but it's not like Corn Cornwall where I live close to. Cornish Sunset. And then the third one was peach tea. So I think there were several teas, but I whatever I didn't I just did what she had for the um top that I did her. And then Love Hand dyed. I have had this in my style. I bought this at the Aberdeen Yarn Festival, and we are in Devon five years in June. And I think and I took my daughter to the Aberdeen Yarn Festival for her birthday. So that's June. So this is at least almost at least almost five years if not six years old so <laughs> this is time time to get it used and i use just about i have oh that's good no oh, i can get it sorry there we go oh, uh, this is all i have left of those three colors <laughs> you can see the nice flecks of navy so i think the navy the navy border goes okay and then i have this is the navy so it's not a dark dark navy it's a nice, um, what would you call that, midnight or? So, um, using stash, using stash. Oh, I should have brushed my hair a bit better. Um, and that's from Fruit, Fruitful Fusions from lovely Ishrat. And again, the squish is just gorgeous. Imagine me being able to sit here with a sweater on. If you've watched before, you know I'm at that season of my own personal summers. And, um... I have both of these things on but you can see it's just really lovely detail love it i love it i love it i love it hope you love it too so i think i've moved this chair 
Excuse me as I take a wee drink and slow down. Haircut on Friday. We always go as a family while well, my husband's bald so he doesn't go but we always go as a family because it's about 10 miles away and um, me and we go to a barber there's no point me going to a hairdresser with short hair and um, my daughter goes and my daughter's got short hair too and my son goes so it's like a family occasion and uh, usually get you know chippy tea or something so anyway that's my only fo and it knit up so quick because it's dk and because of those slip stitches I'll give you one last wee blast of it oh i love it i think that's true to color great with no artificial light and i just faded those three colors and then but as i say he gives you the when to fade you don't have to fade you can do it all one color but i highly highly recommend the squish definitely what I'm wearing, sorry, back to front. This is the Brush Strokes by uh, Tiff Nealon. Um, I don't know if I regret my colours. I love the dark brown, but I'm more, I think sometimes the lighter brown makes it a bit drab. Um, and the wee secret bit down there is the lovely hem. And this is, I can't remember if I, and lovely detail on the, sorry, I can't see my mouth, sorry lovely detail on the cuff sorry i always forget that some people i know some people watch and they lip read i do apologize um uh i can't remember if i did this as a test net or not but anyway as an as ever it's just perfect for today um it's knit in witchcrafty lady polworth um, dk um and yeah so that's that Okay, so as I said before, I left you on a cliffhanger. My life's really boring, isn't it? But I think that's a cliffhanger of nothing on my needles. So that was what I finished. Um, that took me, I don't know. Don't know how long that took me. But I have certainly cast some things on, as you could imagine. It's always fun, isn't it? Getting it all set up and getting your project bag and everything. And um, I don't know where to, still know where to start. Okay, well, the first thing I cast on actually was this. Um, this is the Shetland Wool Week and it is Annual 2023 Volume 9, the front of it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this jumper. Now, if you watched before, you know I did a the sweater I had on in the mall video, you know, it was a bottom up and I said never again. I didn't say never again, that's an exaggeration. And I've cast on another bottom up, but I have a different philosophy this time. This is called the Hattie, I've just got a bookmarker, Hattie Yoke, and it is by Ella Gordon. My colours, my colours totally. And um, I have, I just bought those colours. <laughs> and um, I have um, the, the colours that are in that um, thing, because I am rubbish at putting colours together, and I just thought... These wee balls are so so brilliant, but not not break the bank, and I've had them for quite a while. Um, um, but in my Ruth loves to knit bag by my lovely friend Hannah of Hannah's Happy Space. Eighteen minutes in, Hannah. Sorry, I'm bad today. I have decided if I treat this like a sock, <laughs> it'll get done. Also, I said last time I followed the pattern completely for the, my last bottom up sweater. I much prefer doing top down. Um, I did at least four inches longer than I needed to do. Um, so that'll cut down. It's, it is on three millimeter needles. So it's a labor of love. But um, I had this yarn. I got a big box of yarn gifted to me last year sometime. Matt, like I mean big box of yarn it was amazing. And I am knitting with some of it in these projects. And this is one of them. And I have decided this is my handbag knitting because it's small enough. So I take it to knit group. I'm going to take it tonight to when I have to sit in the car in minus temperatures waiting for my son from cadets. I just can't. My, by far my favourite thing ever. Um, and this is what I've done. And it just doesn't seem as bad or as boring when you're watching a video and in the car and um, just knitting away or chatting at knit group. And as I said to the girls at knit group, oh, yet, yet another pattern that I'm doing with yarn that won't show up on camera. If it does, oh my goodness. So it's a grey from Woolly Knit. I was given two hanks of the 200 grams from this lovely viewer. You know who you are. Um, 
I've given some of the yarn away. Um, my daughter um, crocheted up some things for gifts. I um, knit some hats with it and give them to charity. I've also given some to some of the other skeins to charity. So it's been well, well loved and well used. You can see the wee nap. So don't know what colour this is on Woolly Knit, but it's got a wee nap. Can I find any of the wee naps? There you go. Yeah. So that's my main body and I'm just chugging away at it. Um, I, as I said, my sweet spot for most sweaters is 14 inches from underarm and um, I just work away at that. So there'll be nothing much to say of that <laughs> till I get to the exciting bit. And even, and it's so, it's portable enough for me to, I'm still with my Christmas, uh, my lovely friend Sarah made me these, or made, made all of our knit grip them for Christmas and I'm still using them, sure. And um, that's that still squishes down and will for a good wee while I can take it everywhere with me and um, then hopefully the yoke will be it's steeped at the top you do it round and then I should have shown you that I suppose I've opened it this many that many times show if I can see and then, yeah and then there's a wee button at the back so you just stick that down so that's not as scary as sticking your whole jumper although I have done that so that'll go back into my handbag for tonight with my neck light my woolly um this jumper my fur lined boots <laughs> and then as I get too hot I take them off and put them on take them off um and um actually only for the cold I actually like my wee Tuesday night sitting in the car where I can do nothing but knit I don't feel bad about it um don't tell anybody. Okay, next thing. So, Twin Set and Pearl, TMP Year 24. My original plan and still my plan is to put all of the names of all the patterns into a wee jar and I will pick them out, but obviously wanted to get started. So, my first cast on that I did um, with them is, if I can get the pattern. So they have cowls, socks, shawls, sweaters, suits, um, hats, but I rarely knit hats. So the first one I'm doing is the Lady Whistledown sweater. And this one is by Rachel, the younger butler twin, she likes to say. Can you see the detail? In the sleeve. Now, I was initially a bit apprehensive because my upper arm is not my best feature. Uh, we talk about it a lot um, and I was worried that if I put um, a design down here even though I've got one here that it might um, draw attention to that said area but actually think it's going to be okay and um, I've decided and I have got quite a lot done because it's DK and I am using the yarn now there's a theme <laughs> there's a theme today I am using this yarn oh that I was gifted at the Stitch Fest. Um, when was that? November when I went with Hannah. And this is from Gorgeous Yarns. Oh, hang on. Drop everything on the floor. Gorgeous Yarns. Lovely Caroline. She's from down here. She's in Cornwall. And um, she gifted me a sweaters quantity of this. It is, she, she botanically dyes all her yarn and she sells kits to botanically dye your own yarn, big Kilner jars. So check that out. She's obviously online, gorgeous yarns. And this is rhubarb root. That is actually a really good colour. Oh, I'm so chuffed today. <laughs> and it's Merino DK. It is a dream to knit with. Um, and it's 225 metres per 100 grams. And to say she gave me six and that's what I'm using. I can't decide if it is my colour or not. Um, but I am um, helical knitting because obviously hand dyed yarn is difficult to match, but I would imagine botanically dyed yarn is even more. Do, 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 do. This is what I've done. Oh, I love it. I think that's okay, isn't it? That is. It's been called a few things in this house. <laughs> so, although I have um, alternated skeins, helical knitting, there is, it's. It's looking, I think, it's not pulling. I think, it, I don't know what to say about it. It's, um, it's, I love it. There, that's maybe better. And the sleeve detail is turning out beautiful. 
I think. Now, I seem to struggle. It's This is a wee eight stitch repeat and I seem to struggle to count to eight even with a stitch counter. <laughs> so there may be um, one row a wee bit different in some of them, but it's mine and it's handmade and it's perfect. And I've done quite a bit. So it's on a short needle because I broke my needle. I was <laughs> knitting so hard. I had this all in a very long needle and I was pulling it around, pulling it around and I broke my needle. Um, so um, I had to get delve into my stash of spare needles. And so I am knitting everything. I am doing um, at the needles that were asked for in the um, pattern. I'm just doing it. You can see it starts right at the top. Oh, I love it. Safe and doubt, show it on the podcast. And I am um, too much information, but I started new medication um in over a month ago. Almost yeah, a bit over a month ago for the menopause. I'm sure you're fed up hearing about it, but anyway, I'll stop talking about it soon. And it seems to be starting to work. So I am not as warm as I have been. I still have my um own personal summers from time to time quite a lot but um and I think the cooler weather is really helping so I have living I'm living in faith and knitting double knit sweaters <laughs> in the faith that I will be able to knit, wear them and I am chuffed to bits with that and it's just it's different I've never I don't think I've done I've done these in shawls but not on sweaters so so I would say I'll have that finished next time I see you I would hope because it's just round and round and round. In fact, I might take this. I actually might take this to cadets tonight to get it finished. Actually, that would be much better, wouldn't it? And um, my lovely wee stoppers that Tana gave me for Christmas. I uh, highly recommend the pattern. It's very easy to follow. Um, and I really am enjoying this yarn. I had said to Caroline, would she mind if I knit it and give it away? Because I really wasn't sure if it was for me, but I think it may be coming for me. So again, gorgeous yarns, go and check her out. She is going to unravel with lovely Steph from Perrin Yarns. You see, I always see them at shows down here. And um, Perrin Yarns always, um, I'll put all the details down below, but Perrin Yarns always has very unusual yarn bases. So check them out um and give them some love and this is in my sweater bag that I got from So Can Jo she now correct me if I'm wrong I had to ask her for this on Instagram so I don't think she's got a shop at the minute I think she's maybe moved house as well but it's perfect for my size of a uh, DK um the only thing is there's no pockets in it so you have to kind of delve to the bottom but um, hey you can't have everything so that's that. How are we getting on time wise? We're doing all right. Then my second twin set and pearl pattern <laughs> um, is a pair of socks. Now, I had plans to cast on a different pair of socks, but I cast on these ones since and it's been they've been brilliant because they're so simple but so lovely. And they are the Joe Mo socks. Um, jo is um, one half of the Twin Set and Pearl sisters. She's the older one <laughs> of the twins. And Mo was their lovely mum. So they're the Jo Mo socks. And these are free. I, I say these things and then I, uh, I look it up and it's not. Let me just double check because I know you'll all let me know if it's not. Jo Mo. Jo Mo. Jo Mo. It's a scintillating, isn't it? And Rachel and Joe were probably going, they are, they are. Yes, free. So let me show you just to prove it. So those are the Joe Mo socks and they're free. So that would be a good start if you haven't bought any of their patterns. And look at the wee cable down the side. Beautiful. Now, me out. These are in my lovely bag. Bye. And I always forget. She was the um, Sheep and Cheerful podcast. So Sheepy Chuck Podcast. Anyway, <laughs> with all the wee sayings, all the wee affirmations. And I am using more yarn that was gifted to me. See, I told you there was a thing. And this, sorry, my dogs are going down. And another Christmas <laughs> um, bag. 
and these were from my lovely friend Laura who owns the Woolly Beater yarn shop, my local yarn shop in Oakhampton and this is her own hand dyed yarn, Wool and Moor or Wool and Moor as they call it here. <laughs> Accents hand dyed in Devon, and this is a uh, superwash merino nylon, um, 400 meters and 100 grams, and it's raspberry ripple. And I was in the shop one day, and she said, "Here, take that." Well, this is a whip. This is a hoe, actually. Sorry, I forgot. And this is this is why you do need to block some of your socks because look, but if it's blocked out, oh, I love it. Gorgeous. Oh my. Sock blockers are across the way. You'll see it in all its glory whenever. But that is such an easy cable. It's only one row of cable every eight rows. Look at the way it even goes from the um, cuff. Now, the cuff in the pattern was um, 30 rows, as you can see. Um, but I didn't want it. I wanted it. I did it 22 rows and then an extra cable. Just um, preference, as you can see. Oh, not that cool. <laughs> so that's um, and I have the other one well underway too. Stitch stoppers just falling off. Sorry, doing that again. Um, so that's my second twin. As I say, I think I think I thought I had to do all their patterns in one month. But there's no rush. If I don't if I don't finish something, I'll just. So thank you very much, Laura. Um, she has some of that yarn left, which can be bought online at thewoollybleeder.co.uk or I don't remember. I'll put it down below. And um, in my gorgeous wee bag. Thank you very much. And then another pair of socks. As you know, I knit a cardigan for my daughter, Eva. Uh, the Eva cardigan <laughs> uh, for Christmas. And she is so knit worthy. She has literally not taken that thing off. And... Um, I just thought, you know, she, she loves socks. She wears um, either her school shoes or these high top, you know, we call them gutties in Northern Ireland, high top trainers kind of things. And um, she loves socks. She got several pairs for Christmas. She loves um, organic socks, you know, and um, they always have to have some animal on them or whatever. And that's her thing. And I thought, why have I not knit Eva a pair of socks? <laughs> So more yarn that was gifted. She chose it herself and she chose, if I can find it, something that she just saw sitting on my desk. And um, the yarn, let me show you the sock first. I have one finished, so I have two ho-ho-ho's. This is it. Oh, those colours are showing up so well today. She's a size, UK size seven. Um, I did the, um, I already had this cake that was well, that is, I love a skein of yarn. I think they're gorgeous. They're easy to store, but if I have something that's already caked up, I'll nearly use it. So I don't have to cake it up. Um, lovely Lucy from the Country Bumpkins, um, podcast. Check her out. She, she, there's not a craft she doesn't do. Got an electric, um, skein winder for Christmas. And I know I'm not meant to covet, but I have to say I'm a wee bit jealous. But anyway, <laughs> so I did the um, shadow wrap heel just to keep the stripes and she picked this wee, I don't know why, she's obviously been watching that I do heels and toes. So I would have just done these all, you know, in the in the skein of yarn, but she decided she wanted that wee skein, that wee mini for the top. And didn't she pick well when you see, like it does match pretty well. So, um, and I've done them a wee bit longer than I would normally do them just so that the poke out the top of her shoes and she says I can't wait to go to somebody's house some of my friends houses that um we take our shoe because we don't take our shoes off in this house maybe that's disgusting but we don't and um she says can't wait to go to my friend's house where we take the shoes off so they can see them and I'm well underway with my other one I did the heel turn this morning uh, while the kids were getting ready for school it's great having kids who can get themselves ready for school and um this is the yarn. It's just a regia. I um, center pull all my balls of yarn. Nice and bright, nice and fun. And it's um, regia four ply. And it is 100%, no, wouldn't be 100%, 75, 25. And the colorway is 03726. <laughs> 
and I don't have much commercial sock yarn because I don't like it. I don't wear it myself. It rubs, I know it's psychological, but it burns my feet. I don't understand why. So I tend to do them for other people who can wear them. And um, she'll have fun with those. Maybe we get her to do um, a sock dance, like, um, what do you call him? Martin from Knit365. He does sock dances, doesn't he? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have a lot of a lot of podcasts to write down below the podcast today. But anyway, and um, I've mentioned plenty of podcasts that you can go and watch. And, and this is in my wee knitter's bag. I absolutely love that. It's on both sides. Um, how cheeky. <laughs> I love it. Will that do for my um, thumbnail? Tell it's way past dinner time. I love it. Um, so that those of the hopefully those socks that those ones will definitely be finished hopefully not so there'll be lots of finished objects the next time I see you and then last but not least in my gorgeous Harris tweed bag by I have had I have a lot of project bags as you all know I am nearly as obsessed with project bags as I am with uh, yarn and it's not hurting anybody <laughs> but I have them all in the tote underneath the bed and sometimes you just take the first one off the top and I did a big reshuffle of my project bags and this one came to the surface and this is by So Can Sue so we had So Can Joe and now we have So Can Sue I think she's on Etsy I think she's on Etsy yes and look at that is that just not happy that's just a happy bag Anyway, inside is another twin set and pearl pattern. I promise I won't just be knitting twin set and pearls, so don't 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 switch off. And this only came out last Friday, and I dropped everything to cast it on. This is the Simon shawl. This is uh, Joe and Rachel's brother, um, whose birthday it was on Friday, I think. Um, I want the whole family. <laughs> I'm gonna have the whole family. And um, this is the Simon shawl. By, it's by Jo. Um, Rachel tends to do the sweaters and the socks, I think, and Jo tends to do the cowls and hats and all that sort of stuff. But oh, it is, I'll just warn you, it's addictive. <laughs> it's charted and written, um, and I'm using the chart. And this is more gifted yarn. Please don't switch off because I'm a spoilt brat. I love everything anybody sends me. I appreciate it beyond belief. Um, and it just fills my heart every time somebody sends me something, but I expect nothing. I am doing this because I enjoy it. And um, uh, yeah, it's, but I am very, very grateful. And this was sent to me in the big box that the woolly knit yarn for my jumper was sent to me. And it's, I've looked at it and I've pulled it out and I've put it back in again. And I thought this is the perfect um, pattern for it. Get some labels, where have I put my labels? Oh, very unprofessional. Where have I put all my labels? Oh, bear with. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, brain fog. So anyway, I was talking about the Simon shawl and I am using Rowan Island Blend, which are, comes in 50 gram balls. Now you should be able to do that Simon shawl in um, Two, two alternating skeins of fingering, but um, I just thought to have a wee bit extra wouldn't do any harm. And um, there's 165 meters per 50 grams of this. I'm trying to find there's a number for the color. Is there? Is there? Is there? Not doing very well here today. It's 70% wool, 15% alpaca, and 15% um, silk, which so you can imagine it is gorgeous. And I can't find a colour. Colour. Oh, there's... Oh, it's 401. Good grief. And it's just a white. <laughs> there's nothing. Creamy white, I suppose. And this one is... 130. <laughs> I need to take my glasses off to see it. And this is like a denim grey. That's not coming up well at all. Oh, there's it. So I had three three skeins of each of those and this is what we've got so far. Now it's coming up as grey, um, but it's denim grey and I love it. Squish is unbelievable. Got my little uh, Irish potato progress keeper. So that's 
um, where I finished off to start again. So it's it goes like that, tip to tip. So hopefully, hopefully it's not going for your eyes, but it's oh, it's gorgeous and so simple. Again, slip stitches, so um, really, really effective. And as I say, I had to really <laughs> stop myself from keeping on knitting on it. And um, so I have four of the skeins um, caked up and in my wee cosies, another one from Sarah, another Christmas one. And I just work away at that. That's the Simon shawl. And again, I've got my cupcake, I don't know where I got those from, my cupcake um, needle stoppers so that it doesn't all end up in the bottom of the bag. And that's not bad. Is it? That's pretty good. So the likelihood of me having new cast-ons again <laughs> is quite high, isn't it? Um, explains about that bag, didn't it? Sorry, rustling. Um, so that's how many cast-ons. I have two, so one finished objects, two half finished objects, um, and the sweater and the shawl. I, I don't think that's bad. So the likelihood of a few more cast-ons are quite imminent. I am going to see my colour specialists, my knit group friends, um, to help me pick out yarn from my stash for the Aldous um, shawl by Natasha Hornby. I have everybody and their dogs doing it, but I just it's just I just love it. And I have some gorgeous woolly wool for that. So that'll be definitely going on the um needles at some point, but I am thoroughly enjoying just knitting round and round at the moment. Um for some reason. Other months fly by, but January always feels it's twice the length of all the other months, doesn't it? Even though we're having some beautiful winter weather, um, I really, really shouldn't complain. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Is there anything else knit-wise that I want to share with you? Just let me double check my um, non-notes here. <laughs> of course, I'm in the wrong page. There we go. Um, nope. I think that's it um just uh you know if you haven't subscribed please subscribe um <laughs> uh yeah i think that's it glad i did it today with the good light i'm really pleased um as you know if you've watched before i am a christian and i always like to share something at the end of my podcast that the lord's put in my heart um, but I know not everybody wants to watch that and I don't, I'm not offended by that at all, but maybe today you will. <laughs> it's nothing deep theological stuff. It, it won't be difficult to understand. If I talk about it, it's definitely not difficult to understand. And today I'm actually going to talk about the skin of yarn. <laughs> and for those in case you are leaving, I'll just advertise it first. This is Woolly Adventures yarn. Oh, those colours are coming up so well today. And uh, this is Dan, Danny and uh, Sam. And when my, when we, as a family, we were home in Northern Ireland in uh, the summer, they live just the next town to where my parents' house is. And myself and Eva, my daughter, met up with them for a coffee and they very, very, very generously gave us gifts. And this was one of them. And the name of this is uh, Have Faith to Get Out of the Boat. So that's a little, <laughs> what we might be talking about. It is on their, they're on Etsy. If you Google uh, Woolly Adventures, I'll show you. It says um, Wool Domination, One Colourful Skein at a Time. And they've just opened their own studio um, where they're hoping to have classes and stuff like that. I think it's in Cullibaggy. Um, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm really hoping sometime if I'm home again that I'll be able to go and visit them. It's, this is BFL sock, um, Superwash BFL and 25% 25, 25 nylon and 425 metres. And my daughter has decided she wants socks. <laughs> She's... I've created a monster. So, and I just think, have faith to get out of the boat. That is just like, you know, the colors that you would get in a lake or certainly in Northern Ireland anyway. And um, yeah, so go and check them out. They've got some lovely stuff in their, um, in their uh, Etsy shop at the minute and you support Northern Irish um, anyway. But anyway, if you're leaving me, <laughs> I'll say goodbye and we we'll continue on. And if you're, bamboozled about what how I can bring a skein of yarn into this you'll guess it's the name it's have faith to get out of the boat and as I say I was given that in August and um I just you know I I squished it and I liked it and everything and I put it away and then when I was clearing up um my craft room it you know was 
came out again. I had nothing specific to do with it. It was just a lovely gift. How many gifts have I been given in this podcast? Um, and um, But the title of it kept coming back to me again and again and again. And then when Eva said she wanted a pair of socks, I thought, you know what? Oh, there's such significance in that title. And you know, of course, it's referring to Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 32. John the Baptist had just been killed. Um, there'd just been the feeding of the 5,000 plus, as I always say, it was 5,000 men plus women and children. And um, that's where we come into this part of the story. And I just want to read those verses to you. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake where, while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their, in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You, are re you really are the son of God, they exclaimed. You know, when I read these verses, I always think these disciples had seen Jesus doing amazing things and they had given up everything to follow him. But even they lacked faith in him. Okay, we could say it was because of the storm, because they'd just wakened up, because they were frightened, or in their minds, it really was too amazing. It couldn't be real. But when Jesus spoke, they still doubted. So I understand why people today still struggle with their faith and trusting him. Peter stepped out regardless, but faltered with fear. Jesus didn't let him drown and say, well, that'll teach you you should have trusted me. No, he reached out his hand and grabbed him and saved him. There's so many life lessons for us here. Sorry, Russell and paper. Putting your faith and trust in anyone or anything these days is hard. I don't know if society is any worse now than back then, but it feels like we have to constantly watch our back. Whether it's our finances, the internet or interactions we have day by day. Well, the best news for us today is that we can fully put our faith and trust in Jesus without fear. Hebrews 13 verse 7 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. If you accept that you have done wrong, believe in Jesus Christ, ask for him for forgiveness. And Sorry about that. I was disturbed. Um, yes, I was saying if you... <laughs> If you accept what you've done wrong, if you believe in Jesus Christ, and if you ask him for forgiveness and strive to live for him, he has promised that one day you'll be with him in heaven. The other part of this story, and the name of the yarn, is have faith to get out of the boat. I always think of this as stepping out of your comfort zone. Everyone's comfort zone is different. I have stepped out of my comfort zone in faith quite a few times. Truthfully, as a single woman, it wasn't always difficult. I always loved adventure and I loved the Lord. However, as I've got older, with responsibilities, kids and a career, and let's not even talk about the loss of confidence with the menopause springs, um, it's definitely become more challenging. Someone said stepping out in faith is like using a muscle that has never been used before. It makes us stronger the moment we use it. Doing anything by faith is believing, trusting, then acting. Maybe just taking the initial step of asking for forgiveness and salvation is so out of your comfort zone that you can't see straight. Maybe you could have, maybe you would have to change your life so much and lose things and people that you just can't step out of the boat. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, For we live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 says, So we fix our eyes not in what is seen, 
but what is unseen? Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Eternity is what matters. Trust him to carry you through the storms. You won't regret it. Maybe you are a Christian, but over the years you've settled into a comfortable place of me, myself and I, without even maybe realising it. Maybe you're in a season of life where just getting out of bed in the morning is challenging. Maybe sharing the gospel terrifies you. Joshua 1 verse 9 says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Just as he was, just as he was with Peter and the disciples all those years ago. My challenge to you and to me today is to pray for God to use us in whatever way will reflect his love and glory. Remember, his love and glory, not ours. Pray that a situation might come along that you can share God and his amazing saving love with someone. Maybe you say, wait, Ruth, I'm not a preacher. Well, neither am I. <laughs> Pray that God will show you exactly how to serve him and that you will take those opportunities when they arise. Maybe it's with your family who know you best. Never easy. Maybe it's just going next door or across the street. Maybe it's something simple like cooking a meal for a family that's struggling. Maybe it's going to the uttermost parts of the world to share the great news of the gospel. Release your fear to God and accept the path he leads you down. Judson Van Deventer <laughs> wrote this beautiful hymn. I just want to read it to you and remind you. Many of you have heard it, but just want to read it to you and remind you. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Saviour, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me Jesus, take me now. All to Jesus I surrender, make me Saviour, holy thine, let me feel thy Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power, let thy blessing fall on me. All to Jesus I surrender, now I feel the sacred flame. Oh, the joy of full salvation, glory, glory to his name. I find that very hard not to sing. I pray for myself and for you that you can sing or say those words and truly put our faith and trust in Jesus, even though, like Peter, we are scared. Today, I hope you'll get out of the boat. Hebrews 13, verse 20 to 21 says, Now may the grace of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Sorry about the distraction. Somebody came to the door. I hope today that you'll just mull those things over. You'll take them to your prayer life and that you will somehow in your own way get out of the boat today. I want to thank Sam and Danny for the provoking thoughts from a wee skein of yarn um, and I hope um, that through the next few weeks you'll maybe um, get an opportunity just to share the amazing news of the gospel in some way it doesn't even have to be verbally for some um, that you will um, serve him in that way well <laughs> thrown together as usual um, I hope that you had some crafting time I hope you had some time to relax with me today and um, I hope you um, enjoy all of your knitting at the moment. Um, if you're in a cold place, please try and stay warm. Get all the knits on. Um, if you're in a hot place, I know the other half of the world is probably melting. I hope that you're sitting in front of a fan or in the AC or something and that you've just had a wee bit of time to relax and listen to me rather than 100 miles an hour. Well, anyway, as I always say, we'll see you again. Keep on knitting. God bless. Bye.